Okay, so we're wheel throwing now. What you want to do is you want to start with a nice round ball of clay. Pat it in there. And again, you want something when you hold your hands, you want to have your fingertips like this. You want a ball of clay that's relative to that, right? Not too small, not too large. It's a good part to be beginning. Pat it on. We got our, our bats are on the, the wheel head. So we're going to get that going. And then boom, it goes down. So there are three speeds to the wheel. We start off with our Jaguar speed, 12 cylinders, going down 65 to Indianapolis and going 70 miles an hour because we like to drive that fast, but we're not going 100 miles an hour. Then we're going to slow it down to our Chevy Cavalier speed, and then we're going to slow down to our Volkswagen bus, pulling a trailer uphill. So let's begin. So we always uh, throw counterclockwise. One of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make a lot of references to the clock. So here's 12 noon. I'm right at 6 o'clock. Here's 9 and here's 3. Everything will happen at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. Never will you see my hands go above the 9 or 3. Never. All right. Everything happens right here, right where we are. 7, 6, 5 in that order. So we want to start with counterclockwise. We get our wheel going a little bit faster. On these electric wheels, you can actually get the motor going. So I could get the wheel going faster than that, but that's as, that's as fast as this is. This is our Jaguar speed. We got our bucket of water. The only thing that you should have in your bucket of water is a sponge. So we're going to add some water to it. The right hand, all the function of the right hand is, is to bring water to the ball of clay. That's all that's happening. The centering takes place with the left hand right here at 7 o'clock. So the first thing we want to do is push the clay down to the wheel head so that it's, make sure it's securely fastened to the wheel head. Get, some wheel, get the wheel going a little bit more. If you take your thumb and your pinky and you touch it, this is the thenar eminence. This is the strength right here. If you feel that muscle, and that's our focus. When we're pushing that clay down, we want to keep up basically our thumb knuckle above the, the center of the ball of clay, and our emphasis is right here with our shoulder, our back muscles, bam, coming right down there. So we know it's on. Now, the second move is you get your elbow and your hip bone, actually get the elbow in the hip bone. Get your left butt off that stool and you're swiveling your left butt cheek off and you're pivoting right here at seven o'clock. The arm becomes a shaft and you're driving that clay in, in, in. And then you stop, take your hand away, get the wheel going again. Get a little bit more, we'll get a little juice on our, again, a little bit more water. It's just, uh, just dipping your hand and place it on there gives you enough water. And then again, down. This emphasis is on the shoulder. Boom, driving that clay down until you get to a point. Stop that motion. Take your hand off. A little bit of water, a little bit of speed. Elbow on that hip bone. Get that left butt cheek off that stool right here at 7 o'clock and drive that clay in. In, in, in. Stop that pressure. You don't want to push too hard where the actual the clay starts flopping at an angle. You just want to drive it in. Once you've driven it in, stop that motion. Take your hand off. Again, a little bit more speed. When you're kicking the wheel, you want to have the wheel, you're not, when you're kicking the wheel, you're not putting your hands on the clay. Two separate motions. Again, more water. Drive that clay down. Elbow on the hip bone. A little bit more water. In. Once you've done this three times and you get it nice centered, you're good to go. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that clay is perfectly centered. You don't want it to go wah, 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 wah. If it's doing that, you got to get it centered before you enter the next stage. Okay. Once it's centered, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our right hand and the middle finger and just cut a little groove in that um, underneath the, the wheel, underneath the clay here. I'm going to stop for a second here because this thing is clattering around. So if, if that's happening, if you just take a little soft clay and you put it on here, on the wheel head like that, and then you put it down there. Some of these bats are older and they'll move. And then you push that bat, it will eliminate that process of that clattering because it's not a big deal, but it's a little disconcerting. Okay, so we're back to our centering. So now, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take our left thumb and the right index finger, and we're going to turn the finger sideways against the thumb. And what, the reason we do this is so the finger can't bend. 
If you put it next to it, it wants to bend and then it gets off center. So what you want to do is you want to put your index finger sideways against the thumb. We come right in the center and most of the emphasis is right here on the ball of your thumb. The finger serves more of a point of keeping it centered. So, and what we're trying to do is we want to open that clay up so that it's a funnel because we're going to get our whole hand in here. So we want to open it up like a funnel. So you just drive it down. And at one point, you're going to stop the wheel. You're going to take your needle tool and you're going to measure the bottom thickness. And what you want is you want the pinky thickness. So like the knuckle of your pinky, you want that to be that thick. Generally speaking, it's about a half inch to five eighths inch thick. Okay, so we're centered. We got it opened. Our pot still, the clay still centered. Now we're going to move from our Chevy into our Chevy Cavalier speed, and good enough. We're going to do the lobster claw. The lobster claw is with the right thumb, left thumb, right thumb crosses each other, fingertips, burp, 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 just like that. What I want you to envision is that imagine a classical guitarist where that just the fingertips are touching the strings. This is exactly the way we're going to be approaching the clay from here on out. Everything from here on out happens at 5 o'clock. So we centered it at 7, we opened at 6, and now everything's at 5 o'clock. So I've got my thumbs across, my lobster claw, my arms are grounded on my legs. I'm right on top of this piece of clay, right here at 5 o'clock. All my emphasis is right here. As soon as your arms come up, this starts happening. You have to keep your arms grounded on your legs. And the thing is, is you have to figure out what your body is. So if, if you're taller, it might be out here. If you're shorter, it might be here. You have to figure out your comfort zone of where your arms are on your legs. And that's just a matter of practice of doing this over and over and over again. And then it becomes natural and it feels right. But you just have to practice that. Okay, a little bit more water. Right thumb, left thumb, lobster claw. So my right hand is just going to be staying in this groove underneath. My left hand is going to come parallel across the wheel head and undercut that clay. So I've got an undercut here and I've got an undercut underneath here. So I basically I have like a donut sitting on a plate and I'm going to pinch that donut. And I'm going to bring it up, 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 up. Okay. So now we're moving from our Chevy Cavalier speed down to our Volkswagen speed with that little air cooled motor pulling a trailer uphill. So I'm going to do my lobster claw fingertips right here. My emphasis is going to be with my outside hand pushing towards 11 o'clock to drive that clay up. If my emphasis is with my inside hand towards five, I'm going to have a bowl form, but I want to have a vase form. So I'm going to cylinder form. So I'm going to have more emphasis on my right hand. So they pinch and they're going to come up, 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 up. And as I get near the top, I stop that motion. I take my hand off and then I compress my rim. Oh, that's not good. Let's just straighten that out a little bit. Okay, if you get a wobbly rim like that, take your needle tool and just come in here, right here at five o'clock, just drag that needle tool until you pull that off. All right, so we're gonna straighten them out. We're gonna do it again. When you're, when you're straightening out that rim, your left thumb and finger come right here at six o'clock and you compress that rim. Just right here, this two fingers, the, th the finger and the thumb come here at six, the right finger come out, compresses, okay? So let's do it again. A little bit of water, just a little thin coat of water on that wall. Left thumb, right thumb, lobster claw, right here with that emphasis at five o'clock. And we're gonna pull that clay up, 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 all the way. And as we get near the top, we're gonna stop that motion, take our hand off, compress our rim. So the key to it, <clears throat> you don't want to come all the way to the top because if I were to follow that all the way up, one side's going to be taller, one side's going to be uh, smaller, shorter. So what we want to do is we want to have it be a perfectly even rim. All right, so you stop that motion below it, take your hand off, and then compress that rim. So I'm going to do this again. A little bit of water. Come in here. I'm going to pinch that clay. And then we're going to bring it up, up, up as we get. And sometimes you'll feel that wall varies in thickness. You just want to try to keep it even all the way. And as we get near the top, stop, take our hand off, compress our rim. So this is a good time. One of the things to do is to clean up this bottom because it's going to be easier. 
So if you take the wooden knife with a blade edge to it, and you hold it like you were in kindergarten, first learn how to write with that pencil like you, someone's going to steal it from you, really hard grip. I push it into this hand, and I come in here right at 5 o'clock, and I just remove some of that extra clay. And that, what that does, it just makes it very easy to trim the pot, which we'll be doing later. To, boom, you got that nice clean. The other thing I want you to practice, taking your needle tool and just practice removing this rim. You just take the needle tool from five o'clock and just approach that wall, come down about a half inch or so, and let the wheel do the work. Let the revolutions of the wheel just come and take this clay off so you get comfort with holding the needle tool and removing that clay. And then also I want you to experiment with the rim. So take your, use your hands as a tool, right? So when you're doing this, you can come in here and compress it. You can take your fingers, come in there like that. You can take your thumb and knuckle and roll it over your knuckle. So just experiment with discovering how unique your hands are and how that approach to that clay matters. Now the thing also is that if you've got water pooling down there in the bottom, you want to take your sponge and remove that. Okay? Then I'm going to say, hey Derek, come take a look. So then we take our, our wire tool and we will cut them right in half and we'll take a look. And what we're trying to do is to create a wall that's even all the way around. This is our goal, an even wall all the way around. Now. The thing is, what you're practicing is where your fingers are at this time, at this time, at this time. As you bring that wall of clay up, how that varies. That just takes practice. All right, go practice. Be an artist.